and I'll have to label this particular segment the President, Lou Slips and the Royals. As ever, let me explain. Hi, how are you? Lovely to see you today. Thank you so much for joining me. And as ever, do like and share these particular, uh, more diverse videos, I like to call them, because they are historical. We do put a lot of work into them. And I find it fascinating to share with you the stories that we uncover, you know, from stars that I've interviewed, all of that sort of stuff. By the way, somebody asked me the other day, Neil, did you ever meet Frank Farian um, of Boney M fame and Millie Vanilli? I did indeed. I'll try and dig that out for you. Um, he came over here to do a music musical actually called Daddy Cool, bit of a mismatch of an affair, not a very clever idea, but the songs from Boney M and uh, Millie Vanilli and all of those other No Mercy cracking songs that could always alight the disco floor in the 70s and 80s, could they not? Frank Farian, how did I find him? I'll tell you soon. Back as ever though to your story of the day. This really is all about what happens behind the scenes of closed doors with you know royal state visits, particularly when they encounter the uh, President of the United States. You see, we've seen previously, have we not, when allegedly um, certain people in the Oval Office have made gaffes, like, of course, President Donald Trump, who kind of got in the way of Her Majesty the Queen while they were inspecting the guard at Windsor. Apparently, though, she did find this quite funny after the event, not on the world stage, of course. And shock horror, the former First Lady, Michelle Obama, actually touching the back of the Queen. But again, didn't really matter. Apparently Her Majesty the Queen said, well, it's fine by me. I think Michelle and Barack Obama were more concerned at the driving <laughs> of the Duke of Edinburgh, of that uh, Jeep Land Rover. Apparently they were a little bit nervous about that. Funny, isn't it, when you think about it? Brilliant driver as he was, you know what I mean? What's interesting here, though, is there's a story way back from the middle 1970s, because on an official visit with the First Lady over here was none other than President Jimmy Carter. And I mentioned it the other day that my memory of him was apparently, you know, there was a big thing about peanuts. And when you're a kid, you're like, oh, right, okay, you know, he always came were as affable, very smiley. Obviously, being a kid, you don't know anything about politics. You're not really interested. You just see these people a lot on the TV. And I do remember his state visit, his official visit uh, for the gala dinner at Buckingham Palace. Now, what emerged was a few days later, apparently, well, you know, there was this scandal that was put together uh, literally in the tabloids because shock horror upon greeting our wonderful late Queen Mother, he had kissed her directly on the lips. <gasps> da, da, da. I know. And this really was a scandal that even I remember at school, you know, because people talked about it. It was the broken royal protocol and all that sort of stuff. A few years down the line, it was repeated back in a biography of said, you know, President Carter and Royals. You know, basically the author said, apparently the Queen Mother was absolutely affronted because the last man to kiss her on the lips like that was her late husband, King George. Now, you know, it's a good story, isn't it? When you think about it. But I've been lucky enough recently to be sitting down with certain people who have been at the very core of the British monarchy for many years, who have been at those events, you know. If you wonder where you get your information, it's wonderful to find these people and sit down. They were very much part of this event. And what happened truly was this, that President Carter really became slightly overwhelmed because, you know, it's a big thing, as I've said to you before, to meet the royals. There's no two ways about it. You know, normally, as Joan Rivers said, you've only ever seen them on a stamp and she wanted to go and lick the back of the Queen's head. Joking, of course. What actually happened, according to the source who was in the room, was it was literally a huge mistake. The Queen Mother moved her head to turn round. Mr. Carter went in to plant a kiss on the cheek. And yes, accidentally locking lips. Now, the story goes, as I say, that the Queen Mother said she was slightly affronted. The true story is, you know, he apologised profusely, must, of course, have been crimson with embarrassment. But apparently the Duke of Edinburgh found this mildly amusing, as one can imagine, in the background. So as far as, you know, the president offending our wonderful monarchy, it wasn't the case at all. They did keep in touch for many years later. And of course, it's one of those urban myths that happen between, of course, two major countries. Naturally, when you think about it, they get lost in the midst of time. And it's better for the tabloid to have this scandalous thing. Maybe that particular tabloid, the Daily Mirror, were not a fan, of course, of President Carter. Who knows? 
But according to the source, literally in the room, yes, it never truly happened. It was only an accident. Always good to share. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.